Hi everyone, this is Marie Blue Angel back with Yomi no Kuni. And, um, this should be the last part uh, for the demo at least because I think it said it was 10,000 words for the demo and I think I did half of it last time. Uh, because the prologue was what we had. We are a university student. Um, and we were really hungry and we didn't have anything in our fridge so we went out to the convenience store and on our way back home uh we saw a cat a cat who we saw earlier the cat we saw earlier at this flower shop we met other characters and now this cat is leading us down a dark alleyway and we are following the cat which you know whatever that's fine um that's how we're gonna get into this really into the story on this journey of whatever is happening and more of this spooky supernatural business which i'm very excited about so let's just see where we're going because you know i am in suspense at this point i'm sure it's gonna be good my short-lived journey through the darkness of this narrow unsanitary alley brought me back to my senses what am i even doing i have to get out of here I turned around and started running in the opposite direction. Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? I don't know who this person is. Oh my gosh, who was that? Panic took over me and I let out the highest pitched scream my voice could muster, picking up the pace as a surge of adrenaline coursed through me. For fuck's sake, these human women, always screaming at the top of their lungs whenever they're slightly frightened. Amidst my incoherent screaming, I barely took notice that the cat had somehow ended had somehow ended up right in front of me again. I tripped over him and fell on the concrete with my whole body. Adrenaline didn't prevent me from scraping my face, both of my elbows and my knees, in the process. This will definitely hurt in the morning. If I even make it out of this alive. Okay, so this looks different, right? I continued my cries for help as I tried to get up. Jeez, will you pipe the fuck down already? I swear, you're the worst one yet. Is this the cat? <laughs> the cat prevented me from getting up by sitting on my chest. Ugh. He felt so heavy I could barely move. Yet somehow, I could feel my heart rate decrease. Hey, wait. Why is the flower shop cat talking? This can't be real. I must have hit my head or something. I remained frozen in place, my breath short, barely uttering a sound. Okay, now that you've stopped screaming, let's have a coherent conversation, all right? I nodded, still in a daze. I could see the cat relax and get comfortable on my chest. His forehead started glowing with a strange red symbol. He suddenly seemed otherworldly. Oh, you have a name, which makes sense. My name is Jiu, and I'm the guardian of a place called the Yumi Yomi no Kuni. In fact, we are here right now. Have a look. Okay, glossary update. I want to look at our glossary. Glossary. Let's look at the glossary. Jiu. A cute cat and overseer of the Yomi no Kuni. Jiu is an otherworldly being, the overseer of the Yomi no Kuni. You still don't seem to understand his true nature and reason for being in the y Yomino Kuni. How many times can I say Yomino Kuni wrong? Probably many times. He is shrouded in mystery. Okay, on. I, oop, I obliged and looked at my surroundings. At first, I didn't notice anything different. Just the streets near my apartment. But then, I noticed that it was eerily silent. Not a single straggling pedestrian nor the engine of the occasional car could be heard. Just silence. I looked up to the sky to see a blood-red moon. Where? Where are we? I just told you. Sassy much? I always knew cats were assholes at heart. Yeah, the Yumina whatever. But what is this place even supposed to be? No, that's a relevant question. The Yomina Kuni is the place between life and death. Okay. I won't read it since I'm assuming we just get that it's 
the place between life and death. What? I died? Not at the moment. Can I continue my explanations? Sure. Cute cat. Jiu so cute. Jiu hopped off of me and waited for me to stand. He motioned for me to follow him. He led me back into the alley and crossed it. Time stands still here. It's a world parallel to your own, where spirits in unrest lie, waiting to be either saved or meet their end. Okay. Let's just check that, I guess. Yumino Kuni. A realm where spirits lie in unrest. The Yumino Kuni is a realm between life and death. A place where spirits lie in unrest, unable to move on to the afterlife. The Yumino Kuni distinguishes itself by the red blood moon at its zenith, which envelops everything in its embrace. Okay, good to know. My senses were on high alert, as he explained. Yet I noticed Jiyu was limping as he walked. Oh no, what happened? Wait, Jiyu, are you hurt? A human about eight times my size just tripped over me. <laughs> sorry. Yes, I am hurt. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I'm not a mere cat, as you seem to think. I'll be fine. Who are you then? Still. Now will you please stop interrupting me and start moving? This place isn't exactly safe, and you've managed to injure me. Uh, okay, sorry. Wait, we're in danger? Jeez. Anyways, the spirits you'll encounter here have lost their way and cannot make it to the afterlife on their own. For reasons unknown, some of you living humans have been brought here to help them find their way back. So, so many questions rushed to mind. This was all still so confusing, and Jiyu's explanations brought up more answers, questions than answers. Not only that, he deliberately, deberl, uh, deliberately ignored my attempts to clarify. Any questions? Yes, I've got several. Good, keep them to yourself and ask your comrades. I'm tired and I need to get you to them in one piece. Comrades? Ugh, just follow me and stay close, alright? He never answered and stopped talking, leading me through the red and butte streets. What a grumpy ball of fur Jiu is. Restless, I started looking around. Everything felt so still in an eerie kind of way. Nothing like the Izomo I came to know. Izumo? Nothing like the Izumo I came to know. Suddenly, I spotted one thing moving out of the cord of my eye. What was that? I don't know. I looked at Jiyu. He seemed to have noticed it too. Oh, was one of the spirits? I peered closely at the thing. At first, it looked like something hazy, and I rubbed my eyes to make sure I wasn't imagining things. I opened my eyes with uncertainty and realized that the figure hadn't disappeared. Oh, what the... The figure looked to be a boy, around nine years old. He was crouched near a trash can, digging through it. Was he brought here when I came with Jiyu? I approached the kid and grabbed his shoulder, but it went through him, and a piercing cold shot through my body. A piercing cold shot through my body. I backed up, rubbing my arms to get the cold out of me. What are you? The boy remained silent and continued digging through the trash. My name is Kate. What's your name? He continued to ignore me and moved on to the next trash can. Jiyu, what's going on? My hand went through this boy. How can this be? Did you already forget me telling you this world is... Where spirits un- <laughs> Did you already forget me telling you this world is where spirits and unrest lie? God, you have the memory of a goldfish. I glanced again at the kid who was now resting in a fetal position against a wall. He looked clearly upset about something. Well, I might as well try seeing if he'll talk to me. I approached the kid again and crouched beside him. Hey there, you don't have to say anything. But I want to know if you're okay. Nod your head if yes, and shake your head if no. The kid gazed at me, and I felt another wave of coldness creep up my body. I stayed silent because I was scared to say anything further. For what felt like an eternity later, the spirit shook his head. So, you're not okay. Are you lost? Are you looking for something? The spirit replied to me, but I had to bring my ear closer. 
He was so quiet, it was hard for me to make out the words at first. My, my toy, my toy? Your toy? It was a gift from a friend, my friend, Kento. I'll help you find it. What does it look like? It's a red car. Damn it. Don't help the spirit. It'll find its toy eventually. We have to get you to your comrades. I'm too injured to keep you safe if anything happens. Who are these comrades you keep speaking of? We'll get there, but we have to help the spirit. Gio rolled his eyes and sat down. He lifted one of his paws and licked it. Fine. You have two minutes or else I'm going without you. I smirked at the cat and proceeded to look around for the toy. I pulled out my phone and made use of its flashlight. Okay, investigation or tutorial. Ooh, yay. Okay, uh, we're gonna encounter multiple investigation scenarios throughout this story. I can interact with objects using my mouse. I have some scenarios that will run on a time limit. Please find the, do, complete the objective before the bar is completely empty. Interactable objects light up. You can interact with some objects more than once. Okay, sounds good. Uh, where can I look? Not far from me was a huge metallic box on the side of the road. I grabbed the handles and tried to lift the lid, but it did not move one bit. It seemed to be almost welded to the box. Okay, what about over here? Are you sure you lost your car here on the road and not in one of the houses? Yeah, yes, here. All right. Okay. A grateful exhale left my mouth. I didn't want to break into someone else's house or something like that. Also, that would probably be overkill and illegal. Okay. Let's keep clicking. This is... An empty board was displayed in front of one of the stores. I assumed that waiters regularly listed the daily menu on it. Kneeling on the floor, I tried to see if the toy might be underneath it, though there was nothing except the white painted panels. Okay. About a minute into searching everything, every nook and cranny of one of the alleyway, a red glimmer inside one of the bike baskets caught my eye. Oh, I have it. Aha! Found it. Nice. I grabbed the red toy car and passed it over to the child. Here you go. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Bye. Just as I handed him the toy, he disappeared in an instant. Um, you're welcome. I said this to no one. All right, woman. <laughs> well, let's get a move on. Right, after you. I proceeded to follow to you in the direction of my comrades. I took one last look behind me before noticing the red car was left exactly where the little boy had been. Okay. Fun in it. Oh. Let's look at that. Red. A toy the spirit has been looking for. This red toy car has been lost by the spirit boy you met in the alleyway. Your first time in the Yomino Kuni. In your naivete, you tried to find it for the kid. Even though you were able to return it to him in the end, the toy remained on the same spot even though the ghost had disappeared. Okay, great. Why does this day keep getting weirder and weirder? Oh, I like this background. Ah, oh, there they are sure it's some of the people I've already met. I watched as he purred happily, still feeling a bit skeptical of the situation as I noticed the group we've been begun approaching. Huh, <sighs> today has been so fucking weird. Seriously, I feel like I'm going to wake up at any time. Trusting a talking cat is a new low, even for me. The blobs of people in the distant in the distance start to become more clear as we approach, allowing me to get a look at their faces. Huh? Aren't those... Well... Aren't those the people from the flower shop? Yes. I heard a familiar voice and noticed the man in a burgundy shirt from this afternoon. From this afternoon. Oh, and Ray. I remember that shirt. That's the guy who knocked me over. I could recognize it anywhere at this rate, as I practically face-planted into his chest earlier. Also, wouldn't we be in, like, pajamas or something? I mean, I guess for some of us, if we- if the rest of you guys knew you were coming here, you'd be dressed in, like, your out- going out clothes. 
I assume I'm not dressed in like super like my usual going out outfit so it's fine Jiyu looked a bit smug as he puffed out his little cat chest as he walked what do you think I wouldn't give just anyone the privilege of feeding me three square meals a day <laughs> I felt myself secretly giving a good-natured eye roll taking in the figures of the people ahead of us yeah that's definitely them I began to hear indistinct mumblings as they spoke amongst themselves, but then the cheery girl from the flower shop looked our way with a smile, waving wildly. Hey, look! It's Jiu! And that girl! Huh? You're right. That explains Jiu being so friendly earlier. Oh wait, you guys met her too? I felt my cheeks tinged with redness as my eyes turned on me when we finally reached and joined the group. As I looked between everyone, I recognized most of the people and felt myself relax. Only slightly, though. Uh, hello, everyone. Oh, we should all introduce ourselves. What do you think, Ray? Uh, that sounds like a great idea. Though I'm afraid she and I have already met, on less pleasant circumstances. Amano gave me an, unapolo an apologetic smile as he politely nodded in recognition. It seemed like the girl regarded him as the leader of the group, if she's basically asking him permission. Is he the oldest, or the first? I don't know. Good to see you again, Miss Ray Amano, if you've forgotten. How could I forget? Emmy, if we're doing introductions, don't forget about Hiro. He's being antisocial, as always. I smiled a bit as I saw her beam excitedly at his approval, before turning to a man with glasses lingering in the distance, waving him over. Hero, come here. A man with glasses stalked over to us, looking at me reproachfully. I shifted a bit uncomfortable. A bit, a bit. Uncomfortable again under his gaze. Huh. Great. Now we're all here. Well, other than him? Whose voice was that? I have no idea. Was that Emmy's voice or was this? I don't know. Anyways, who's him? Also, why does this guy keep trying to size me up? Hmm. The cheerful girl grabs onto the taller, stoic-looking woman's arm with a smile. I'll go first. I'm Emmy Inoue. Inoue. But you can just call me Emmy. Oh, and this is Mimi. The other woman, Mimi, shifted awkwardly on her feet. My name is Mayumi Fukumoto. Only Emmy calls me that. Okay. Talk about typical sunshine and grumpy duo. The muscular man then smiled and stepped forward a bit, and I couldn't help but take in his large figure. I forced myself to look away as my eyes lingered a bit longer than they should have. <laughs> it's like he dresses specifically to show off his muscles. Not that I mind. I'm Ryuji Mia Miura. Miura? Ryuji Miura. Nice to meet ya. A monoclass Miura on the shoulder with a grin, as if they were as close as can be. Best drinking buddy, this one. Miura laughed a bit and punched him gently on the shoulder. Once they quieted down, Amano gave the other of the three men a pointed look. He then patted him on the back, pushing him forward encouragingly. Come on then, hero. She won't bite, you know. Lay off, Ray. Are they brothers or something? I mean, they, they could be. He shrugged off his hand roughly, grimacing a bit from the lack of formality. Hiro Sasaki. Man of little words, huh? Amano laughed a bit at his lack of social graces and winked at me good-naturedly. Don't mind our little hero. He doesn't know how to talk to people. Especially women. I raised my eyebrow at the comments, noticing how close those two seemed to be. Hero, on the other hand, looked like he was holding back a temper. Ugh. Even the tips of his ears are turning red. For the record, I happen to be the only one here wanting to improve our current situation, not just sit around pretending nothing's wrong. If all of you want to fool around and keep getting dragged here at night to find more drinking buddies, that's your prerogative. But at least some of us are trying. Sasaki then turned to me, his voice still a bit harsh. If you want to actually solve things, we might get along. But if you want to spend your days frivious frivolously without a care, then you might fit in better with these two. Yikes. He sounds stressed. Absolutely, he does.
Oh, and there he goes. Sasaki rolled his eyes and shoved past Nabano, bumping their shoulders as he stomped back to his spot a bit further away from the group. Amano sighed and loved, looked to Inoue with a dispirited smile. Hero. I'll go talk to him. Uh, sorry, miss. Hero is a bit touchy sometimes. Don't mind him. Got it. I gave a polite, thin-lipped smile, feeling a bit nervous about the current state of high tension. Oh, we've been talking this whole time. Sorry, what about you? Oh, me? I'm Kei Nizumi. Nice to meet you. I looked over all of them, going down the line to make sure I got their names right. I made sure to go by their last names to be polite. Yep, you got it. Though you can call me Emmy, you know. It feels so weird being called by my last name. If you don't mind me asking, are Amano and Sasaki related or something? Miura let out a loud belly laugh, as if it was outlandish. An outlandish, ridiculous question. He began to try and answer me between his laughs. <laughs> Them? <laughs> no, Rei is just like that. Tries to help Hiro get along and make some friends. Guess that's just how they are. Yeah, Hiro's not that bad. Rei is sort of in charge if you wanted to assign titles. You mean he is in charge? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ray is super nice and tries to take care of everyone, but Hiro is. And they're like cats and dogs. Inoue giggled a bit at Fukumoto's comment, but then a twig snaps loudly behind us, making us all turn attention to that direction. Miura smirks at the approaching figure. Oh, look who finally decided to show up. Intrigued, I turned to the direction of Miura, Miura seemed to be pointing. And to my surprise, I saw a very familiar figure approaching us. Oh, our best our, is it our bestie? No way. Though his blonde hair shone reddish in the distorted moonlight, and his trademark smile had vanished from his lips, I would recognize him any time. How could I possibly not? Haru? Oh, you know him too? These coincidences are starting to creep me out. This has to be some twisted joke. His glance fix. His glance, fixed on the screen of his phone, slid up and locked with mine. <laughs> As though he had run into an imaginary wall, he came to a sudden halt. His mouth opened slightly and started to form something unintelligible to me. Anyways, I will fetch the other two. Hooray, hero. Haruka is here. It was only a few seconds in which I had averted my eyes from Haru to Miura, and yet my childhood friend managed to close the distance in just, in just that short time. Abruptly, a shadow had settled over me as I felt my childhood friend's hand firmly clutching my wrist. Without me being able to react, he started to drag me forcefully away from the group. Hey, Haru! Stop! Let go! His grasp only loosened where, when we got, had gotten a few meters distance from the rest. Oh, what in God's name are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. I followed this Corrigan Creeman sound of a like of a cat. Corrigan Creeman. Which sounds like I'm high, saying out loud. And suddenly, the moon turned red and I was here. With a disgruntled sigh, he buried his face in his hands before grabbing me by the shoulders. His eyes transfixed mine while his face came abnormally close to, my, to me, so that I found myself unable to avoid him. A cold shiver rolled down my spine and I could feel an unpleasant twitch in my fingertips. I wanted to oppose him, but he snatched the words out of my mouth. Why aren't you with mom like I asked you to? Why? An expression so strange spread across his face. An expression of defeat. An expression of sorrow. I'm sorry. I just... I'd rather be at home right now, too. But what is the meaning of all this? Without giving me any form of explanation, he averted his eyes and enclosed his hand in mine, this time more gently than before. Come. Haro guided me back to the group which, I had been wait which had been waiting for us. Hesitantly, I followed his lead. Each step felt heavy almost as if my body was gradually melting into the ground. Even as we arrived back at the others, he didn't let go of my hand. No, his grip got tighter. My mind juggled so many emotions while Haru and I made our way back to the group. I must have been lost in thought because he shook my shoulder, bringing me back to reality. Hey, Kate, did you hear what I said? 
Sorry, Haru. I'm still having a hard time adjusting to all of this. Can you tell me what you said again? Haru smiled sadly, shaking his head. Don't worry about it. It wasn't important. I was so distracted by his presence that I completely forgot about the other members. A light blush colored my face and I cleared my throat. Ahem. So, what are we gathered here for? We thought it was a good idea to meet up and revisit our goals. As the group ke keeps getting bigger, it's better to keep everyone up to date. Can we get through this quickly? I have some stuff I need to do. I'm sure all of us don't want to be here, Sasaki. We have no choice, after all. We'll be done in no time. We can have some yummy snacks after this. Let's get back on track. We need to tell Azumi what we do here. Yeah, I'm curious. What are your roles here in the y Yamino Kuni? We want to know why we're here and how we can stop being brought here. It's kind of annoying, honestly. We know when it will happen and what our objective is, but it doesn't become any easier. Our, what is our objective? Our objective is to guide the spirits to the afterlife, which means we have to engage with them and find out what's preventing them from passing on to the afterlife. And if you are very stupid, you might destroy the soul, ruining any possibility for it to find salvation. When does it happen? It happens in the middle of the night between 10 and 2 a.m. I can't remember the last time I had a good night's sleep. We are all doing our best here. We assigned ourselves roles to be better organized. I wonder what my role will be in all of this. Care to elaborate? Well, I was the first one here after Haruka. He helped me adjust to the Yomina Kuni, and I kind of just became a leader type figure once more people joined. I nodded in agreement with Amano and brought my gaze over to Sasaki. What do you do, Sasaki? I use my brain to make sure everything goes well, compared to the rest of them which means I'm on the computer researching anything about this place. Have you found out anything? Hmm. I will make it happen. I stared at Sasaki for a few moments before hearing Inoue tell Fukumoto to speak up. Come on, Mimi. Tell her what you do. You've been so quiet. I don't really have much to tell Emmy. But you're so cool. I'm not. Did I see a tint of rose color- a rose color Fukumoto's cheeks, probably. <laughs> well, I stay calm and collected in stressful situations. It can help us get out of a bind. I keep everyone happy, right, Mimi? Fukumoto looked like she wanted to pat Inoue's head, but she clenched her fist and kept it at her side. You certainly do. I smiled at Inoue and Fukumoto. They're cute. I'm very handy. I like to fix things and I can pack a punch. Right, Ray? Mira playfully punched Ana Amano's arm, which caused him to stumble. He just dropped into the, <laughs> the bottom of the screen. He regained his stance, coughing his into his hand as if nothing happened. You're all right. Ah, they're too cute. What about you, bestie? Haru stood quietly at the side. He hadn't said much while I was having a conversation with the others. I put my arm on his, trying to comfort him. You okay? I... Haru looked down at his shoes. He was silent after that. All I could do was... Uh, all I could do was pat his arm, hoping that would help a bit. Are you all done yet? We have to get to the apartment. We've been out here in the open for too long. I feel like we should have just gone to the apartment. I almost forgot about you. He's been so quiet. Jiyu stretched out his white paws. He had been laying down close to the shrine, observing the conversation. Right, the apartment. Let's go check it out, shall we? We all watched as Amano pulled out his set of keys, all of them jiggling against each other until he picked one of the dark gold ones. He then inserted it into the door, and with a click, he pushed it open and invited us all in with a smile. I felt my jaw drop as a, a bit as we stepped in and looked around at the nice decor. Ooh. Ooh. Well, here it is, our humble, little humble abode. This is your place? Miura, who stood next to Amano, put a hand over his mouth in an effort to hide a smile, a small chuckle, but the crinkles by his eyes gave it away. 
Why is he laughing? Is something funny? Not at all. Don't worry. Ray's just loaded. Bonafide rich kid. Oh, hush. Amato gave a good-natured ad roll to his friend before turning his attention to me. A warm smile played on his lips as he waved over to follow him. Okay. Let me show you around. It's not anything crazy great, but I hope you can make yourself comfortable when you're here. I got it for all of us, after all. He placed a gentle hand on my shoulder, flashing me his blinding smile. Seems very charming. We then went to look through the layout of the de de definitely not small apartment, and it was complete with a small office, a single bedroom, and two bathrooms. Nice. This guy's sense of funny is way off. You have a nice place here. Thanks, but again, it's yours now too. Oh, also, I keep the fridge stocked with food and drinks at all times. How do you do that? So feel free to help yourself whenever you'd like. Oh, I guess probably in the daytime, because it's still the same world. <laughs> Not exactly, but it's parallel to the human, the, re the, the human world, rather. We then returned to the living room area where we saw everyone already quite relaxed. Even Sasaki, despite keeping to himself earlier, was casually helping himself to a Wompster energy drink and a bag of Naritos. Amano chuckled to himself as he noticed Sasaki digging in and noticed his head towards his head towards the others to motion us to find a seat and join them. See, even if he can loosen up here, you can too. I nodded and smiled a bit, beginning to feel slightly more comfortable with the group as we took whatever seats were still available. Welcome back, guys. How'd you like the tour? It's a nice place. Mm-hmm. Did I do something to upset him? I don't know. You need to communicate, my dude. I gave Haru a lingering glance, thinking back to what I could have possibly done, but noticed he gave Amano a certain look to which he responded with a nod. Ahem. Amano cleared his throat to get everyone's attention, and they quickly began to settle down and lower their voices. Perhaps we should tell our new friend a few things about this place. Anyone want to go first? Never be alone from 12 p.m. Uh, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Spirits can be divisive and cunning, and being unused to them, you're an easy target. Not even us experienced people stand a chance alone. Oh, not even us experienced people stand a chance alone. Everyone's voices mixed together as they clamored in agreement, except for Emmy and Fukumoto, who seemed to be having a private conversation. After a moment, I could see her nod to Emmy, and then she rose her voice to break the silence. Hey, let's calm down a bit. Emmy wanted to add something. All attention turned to Emmy as things quieted again, except for the not so distant rustling of a chip bag and the incessant crushing that followed, causing Fukumoto to give Sasaki a cold look. Did you have anything going on on Saturdays? Saturdays? No, I don't think so. Why? Oh, good. We have meetings here on Saturdays to plan our weeks out and talk about information we've gathered about the spirits. Hiro has actually been a great help with keeping the information and other things organized, too. Nice. As if on cue, Sasaki had a proud expression on his face like he had finally been recognized with deserved praise. Oh yeah, someone should bring her in on Saturday so she doesn't get lost. Haru began to open his mouth, but Miura, Miura had been a quicker, second quicker. I'll bring her. I'm out running errands that day anyways, so it's not a problem. Hmm. Okay. Here, give me your phone. I'll put my information in for you. I obliged and passed him, passed him my phone without hesitation, watching as he nimbly tapped his information. When he had passed me back my phone, I noticed he had already texted himself. Great. Seems like we got everything sort of settled for now. I jumped a bit when I heard the clock chime as the hour changed. Time's up. Ready to go, Emmy. Sounds good to me. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow. I watched as they began to gather their things and leave together, and turned my head to Amano as I heard him chuckle. <laughs> Sorry, you just looked confused. It was adorable. Hurry up. Hurry up. Mira and I are already gone, done grabbing our stuff. Yeah, yeah. Anyways... They tend to leave pretty quick. Most of us do, really, because we still have our daytime responsibilities. Tell me about it. I didn't sleep more than four hours a day the past couple of nights, and it is killing me. Fair. I don't know how I'd fare. I'd go more- I'd go a bit more crazy slash I would become more unhinged if I couldn't sleep. 
for that long. Oh yeah, it's almost time for things to go back to normal, according to what they told me. Gotcha. They're leaving because it's almost 2 a.m.? Yeah, we live in Paris, so it's safer. So, are we all... You're coming with me, silly. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. We'll be heading out. I waved goodbye to the three of them as Haru led me out by the wrist. My wrist, laughing slightly as I heard Sasaki still arguing with the mono as he left. Fun. You know, if you want to hold my hand, you can just do that. In any case, it would be a lot more comfortable than the way you've been tugging on my wrist until now. From the moment we had left the apartment, he still hadn't let go of me. Come to think of it, he has been acting very strange all day. He stopped in his tracks with his back turned to me. I wonder how long Haru has been in this whole situation, and how long it was before, like, Rei showed up, also. I would have liked to have seen the expression on his face, but he remained in that position for a while. I don't really understand it all yet, either. This Yomino Kuni. Spirits that need to be saved? Why we are here? All of this sounds more like a weird dream, like the premise of a TV show. But... But I would like to understand. I felt his grip loosen as he slowly turned to face me. The pain in his eyes glistened in the red moonlight. My chest felt heavy. Heavy. Haru. A painfully stiff smile contorted his face while he took a few steps back, burying his hands in the pockets of his jacket. I just... I just wish you wouldn't have been dragged into this. The Amina Kuni is not just a scary place full of spirits that might not have your best intentions. You can die here. You can die in here, Cade. The unusual urgency of his voice caused a shiver to run through my body. His otherwise relaxed and warm nature had completely evaporated. Maybe someone else died. Like, maybe someone else was here before Haru and they died. And then Haru Ray found Haru by himself. Theory. Haru, I... You don't have to say anything. I need some time to think. He turned away from me and proceeded on his way. The walk home seemed like an excruciating eternity, seeing him like this was worse than the situation we were actually in. I wanted him to talk to me, to tell me what exactly what was happening. I wanted him to flash me his stupid grin like he normally did. We're here. Again he halted, which almost made me bump into him. You should go to sleep and get some rest now. Lock the door behind you and don't let anyone inside, you hear me? Reluctantly, I took the keychain out of my satchel and inserted it into the front door. Just as I was about to turn the key in the lock, a violent gust of wind hit me, causing me to shut my eyes. Seems about time. As soon as I opened my eyes again, the reddish moonlight that tinted everything in its grace had disappeared. We're back. Go inside. You must be tired. Tomorrow we'll have enough time to talk about everything. You were such a fucking liar. I can see it in your face. But instead of talking back to him, I obeyed. To be honest, I didn't even have the strength to rebel against it. In fact, I could feel the exhaustion in my weak knees. Good night. Night. Sweet dreams, Cade. Hmm. Yeah, something else must have happened. Birds. I woke up in my bed. Instantly, I felt a burning sensation in my palms and knees. Right. Yesterday's night's oddities started by royally face-planting, hurting myself and some kind of cat-like supernatural entity in the process. Wait, did I even disinfect this? Probably not. I got up to go wash my injuries as I recalled all of my- oh, all of yesterday's events in the Yomina Kuni. I somehow found myself in this parallel dimension where lost spirits gather in search of the afterlife. I had even met a spirit, that of a young child. Somehow, along with a few other young adults like myself, I was to guide these spirits to rest, either by saving them or destroying them. All the while, we were also figuring out how we got into this mess in the first place. I was pretty much dragged into this whole ordeal, all of that because I wanted a sandwich. I really don't know what to make of this, aside from the fact that I now have a night job with a bunch of complete hotties and my best friend. Do not think of your best friend as a, as a hottie. Um, I had a thought before that. You didn't even get to eat. I'd be so hungry. You have to go to the store now. That's my. That would be my problem. 
Well, that is, if he stops being mad at me, when he's the one who stood me up and forced me to go out at night. That's true, actually. I mean, he could have known that, but that is true. That's what happened. I would have made a pouty face, but I was too busy wincing from the sting of disinfecting my scraped hands and knees. Once I was done tending to myself, I crashed back into my bed, exhausted. My cell phone vibrated on the nearby nightstand. I nonchalantly picked it up to see who was messaging me when I noticed the time. What? It's already noon. What have I done? Sleeping in so late. I took a deep breath trying to keep myself from giving into this wave of stress washing over me. Relax, it's Saturday. Oh. Ah! Intruder! Oh. It's you, Chiyu. Sorry. Wait. How did you get in here? Keep it down, will you? I have sensitive ears. Your bed look more comfortable than Ryuji's. Ryuji's. So I snuck in last night. <laughs> Jiyu was curled up in a ball, sleeping beside me. Well, he was sleeping before I made all that noise. I'm just not used to having a talking cat in my apartment. I'm not a cat. Well, you look like one. Besides, won't Miura worry if you're not at his place? I live wherever I feel like living. <laughs> Cute little face. Ugh. Well, make yourself home, I, gu I guess. Make yourself at home, I guess. You don't need to ask me. Now look who messaged you. Ugh. What an annoying old fart. Nevertheless, I listened to his request and paid attention to my messages. Morning, Miss Izumi. It's me, Ryuji Miura. I took the liberty to add you to our group, too. Hope you don't mind. Good morning. Oh, good morning. It, nah, it's fine. Are you up? I'm close by. Could pick you up so we can go to HQ together. Yeah. Oh, it's already Saturday. Without a moment's thought, I quickly hit the share my location button. Wait, why did I type this? I'm not even close to being ready. Hoping it took him a little while to get my to get to my place, I shot out of a bed, which nearly knocked Jiyu over. Damn, woman. Be more careful. A cat having nine lives is just a myth. I, uh, I'm sorry. I'll never get used to a fucking cat actually talking to me. <laughs> I quickly lifted the rather heavy Jiyu off my bed to be able to make it and place him on the table. As soon as I was done, as soon as I was done, I rushed to the bathroom to get myself ready. The ringing of the doorbell made me jump. I don't remember what got into me, but I rushed to the front door and opened it a crack. You're already here? As soon as I saw Miura's dark brown eyes, which were wide open and not looking at my face, but further down, I knew what had happened. His mouth was slightly open as if he wanted to say something. The lit cigarette between his lips, holding on for dear life. I mean, I don't mind what I'm looking at, miss. But shouldn't you take me out to dinner first? That's not... Ugh... My cheeks visibly turned red and I could feel my ears burning up. An unpleasant sweat formed on my palms. I knew exactly what his eyes were glued to. In my haste, I'd forgotten that I was still in my white, almost, <laughs> transparent nightgown. I'm sorry. Please give me a moment. What a start to the day. With a pounding heart, I closed the door behind me and felt the judgmental gaze of Jiu on me. What? Nothing. Shouldn't you get yourself ready? Right. Haha, uh -huh. we were still in our pajamas. We also just woke up, so understandably. Fun. Cool, cool. By the time I had slipped out of my nightgown and changed into my outdoor clothes, several minutes had passed. I like that we get the sound effects for, like, moving the story along. I'm sorry for the wait. Once I had locked the front door behind me, Jiu had followed me outside. I saw Miura still smoking a cigarette and leaning against an old red lacquered four-seater. Giving me a nonchalant hand gesture, he motioned for me to join him. I'm going to drive. You can sit down on the passenger seat. Oh, and don't mind the bags in the back. Those are the errands I had to run. What? Okay. Flow bags full of flowers, seeds, and everything needed to cultivate plants. Cool. Oh, for the for the shop. 
Okay. I'm just not going to read the glossary just because I feel like most of the stuff um, is kind of what we gather from the conversation so far. I'll join you after I finish smoking. Okay. We spent the car ride in idle chatter, with most of the conversation coming from me as I tried to burn the embarrassment out of my head from er the earlier encounter. Thankfully, it wasn't long until we arrived, and I watched as Mira 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 Rouge rummaged through his pocket before pulling his keys out and opening the door with a click. Jiyu had brushed past our legs and made his way inside. Hmm. Amano was in the kitchen, fiddling with an appliance, but turned to greet us. I gave him a quick smile, but it became more genuine as more genuine as I inhaled a rich divine scent. Hmm. Coffee. Hey man, brought the newbie, as promised. You making coffee? I felt him put his hand on my shoulder before moving past me to join Amano. I quickly took my shoes off and set them aside before joining them, excited at the prospect of good coffee in the morning. I noticed Jiu had made his way onto the couch at some point and waved at him as I made my way into the kitchen, but he seemed to stun me with his usual smug expression. Yeah, help yourselves, guys. I was making enough for everyone. Thank you. Mira, Miara began making himself a cup, and Amana stood nearby holding his own, already made cup, and sipping on it. I reached up into the same cabin I had seen Miara reach in to grab a cup for myself, but it was tucked further back in the shelf, and I had trouble reaching it, even on my tiptoes. Here, let me grab that for you. Amano was suddenly beside, behind me, reaching over above me to grab the cup, as if it was mo the more most natural thing to do. <laughs> they both had the same idea. Miura had seemed to reach up instinctively too, but Amano was slightly quicker, as Miura had to stop pouring his own cup first. Miura, ha Miura had moved his hand away when it accidentally touched Amano's hand, and he shifted his focus back to his own coffee. Amano then handed me the cup with a soft smile. I gave him a grateful smile before shifting on my feet awkwardly, noticing I had been sandwiched between these two men in the kitchen. Did the room suddenly get smaller? I moved out of the way casually, and Mono, noticing my silence, spoke up to fill the void. Uh, if you want some sugar or cream, they're around here somewhere. Cream should be in the fridge, but I hid the sugar from Emmy and Hiro. I heard Mira. Mira <laughs> Why is your name hard for me to say? Mira. Mira snicker at the comment and felt a smile break across my face too. You guys all seem close. It's kind of nice. Heh, <laughs> you could say that twice. Being stuck in the same weird situation with people tends to bring you closer. I'll bet. Oh, speaking of which, sorry that the introductions were so hectic last night. As I'm sure you could tell, we didn't expect anyone else to join us. It's no trouble, really. It may have been a bit crazy at first, but we all have those days. Everyone seems nice enough so far, though. Or two. Even if some of them seem a bit... quirky. Hmm. Amano stopped mid-sip and set his coffee down on the counter, eyes wide, as if something suddenly remembering something. By the way, I almost forgot, but I have some things for you to look over, Azumi. Things? What things? I watched as he scurried into the office and heard the sound of papers shifting as he seemingly dug through quite a few folders. He then returned soon, holding three set sheets of paper. He approached me directly, handing them to me. I began to look through the papers, careful not to spill coffee on them as I made sure to hold the sheets far from whatever from, from it whenever I took a sip. What's this? Spirit information? Precisely. A few of us have been working on gathering information about them to try and help them. Since you're new to our little group, I thought it would be better to get you acquainted quickly and have you join in our efforts. Don't worry too much about who is working on what. Just try and think about which case it speaks to you. Or which case speaks to you. It's easy to help the spirits when you can relate to them. I nodded along as he spoke, absorbing the information as I read through the sheets. It looks like each individual paper sheet was uh, had information on a different spirit. A 15-year-old boy with quite the temper, an old man who has been trapped here for some quite, for quite some time, and a young child. Hmm, they're all so different. Okay. First one, 
Hamazaki Yamoto, aged 9, curse of death, trafficking, question mark, temperament, semi-hostile, general notes, victim of trial, trafficking ring, how terrible, caution when approaching, traumatic death, PTSD, Fukumoto has more information. Goro Mazaru, 15, unknown, cause of death, temperament is very hostile, general notes, often seen at the city park, discovered a week ago, easily provoked, throw things, looks rough and dirty, ruffled hair. Uh, Fujimoto Geri, Geri, 75, unknown cause of death, non hostile, often seen at abandoned housing complex, been in the Yomino Kuni the longest, rarely speaks, wants us to leave. Is it alright if I take some time to think about it? Oh yeah, of course. Just try to have your answer by tonight. I'll make sure to follow up. Uh, I feel like maybe starting with the grandfather one? The older gentleman one? I gave him a nod before sipping my coffee again, and the two of us moved to join Mira and Jiu, who were already relaxing on the couch. I sat on the couch quietly, thinking about my assignment. Jiu's soft purr brought calm over me. Mira and Amano were busy with their own conversation, which I had a hard time following. Meanwhile, I just pondered over which spirit I wanted to try and save first. As I gave a read over the information sheets for the umpteen time, the front door opened. In came the two women I remembered meeting yesterday. And so, Mr. Yamaguchi went around and gifting sweets to all the caretakers. I love them all so much, despite the poop explosions and the cognitive decline. I see. Oh, hi everyone! We're back from work! Hello. I took a look at Mira, who greeted them with a nonchalant wave. Amano, on the other hand, gave them a polite greeting and a smile. Well, that's one of- wait, greeting your- Huh? Well, that's one way of greeting your- Oh, shut it, me. I don't even know for sure what type of relationship Mira has with these women. In any case, it did seem quite intimate at the flower shop yesterday. The shorter of the two women beamed upon seeing me. She walked up to me in a confident step, dragging along the taller woman by the hand as she did. Hi there, Kate. It's really nice to see you again. Do you remember us from yesterday? It's true, we really didn't have a chance to properly introduce ourselves. I do remember you two, but it's true. I'm not sure if I actually caught your names accurately. I'm sorry. I'm Emmy Inoue. I'm a caretaker for senior citizens. And here is my bestest of friends, Mayumi Fukumoto. I call her Mimi, though. Come on, Mimi, introduce yourself to Cade. Fukumoto didn't answer and just flashed a police badge to me. Is she mute or something? Or does she just not like my face? Mimi, be a good sport and answer poor Cade or we'll end up traumatizing her. Mayumi Fukumoto, Division 3 Police Investigator. Pleasure. Fun. Oh, come on, Mimi, that's no fun. Tell her about your hobbies or some of your cool cases you've been on. I exercise as a hobby and I can't tell you more about my job because it's confidential information. Um, okay. Moving on, I like knitting and crochet, and I have a huge collection of grocks in all of the colors. Grocks are fun. I've seen it. It's definitely a collection. That and all the croc, -croc charms. But they're all so cute. I couldn't help myself from buying them all. Oh, that's fun. What's your favorite shoe store? I wouldn't have asked that question. <gasps> oh! M. Gee, uh, do you like shopping? I always wanted a shopping partner, but all the others get bored so quickly at the mall. Even Mimi. I'll bring you to my favorite store. <laughs> I like shopping. That's quite alright, Emmy, but I think you'll just annoy Izumi if you continue rabbling on about shopping. Inoue uh, cleared her throat, toning down her energy by quite a bit. Oh, right. Sorry. We just met. I'm just really happy there's a new woman in the crew. I hope we can get along. Her earned a smile encouraged me to smile. Fukumoto and Inoue have uh, seem or seem to have quite opposite personalities, but they seem close as they spoke to me. I couldn't help but ask. So, did you two know each other before ending up in the Yomino Kuni? Oh yeah, Mimi and I go way back. Right, Mimi? Right. We are childhood friends, actually. Fukumoto nodded at her words, stiffly agreeing with her bubbly friend. They're just like Haru and I, except after last night's events, I'm not so, so sure where we stand anymore. 
The cogs in my mind turned. They don't really seem to acknowledge each other as more than just friends. From that interaction, are they, or are they not intimate together with Mira? I, mean, I don't know, maybe. Well, it's nice to meet you. I hope you get along. Oh, I'm sure we will. In a way, put a firm hand on my shoulder as an amicable gesture. As soon as she did that, I could feel Fukumoto glaring daggers at me. Precisely, she was looking at Inoue's hand on me. I gulped, not knowing, really knowing what to make of this. Did I do something wrong? Fukumoto is staring me down like she's ready to pounce at a moment's notice. As soon as Inoue removed her hand from my shoulder, everything went back to normal. It was brief, but that moment in time definitely felt tense. Is Inoue truly sure they're just friends? Fukumoto definitely is protective of her. Unless she's just really suspicious of me. Wanna go get some drinks in the kitchen, Mimi? I need a refresher. Both Fukumoto and Inoue make their way to the kitchen area, leaving me with no one to talk to once again. The idol was the idol idol was interrupted by the sound of the apartment opening. The apartment door opening, and time has passed. In came a yawning Sasaki followed by Haru. The latter closed the door behind him and gave us only a brief nod while Sasaki made himself comfortable at the dining table. One after the other, in addition to his laptop and documents, he grabbed several snacks from his bag, ranging from cookies and chocolate chips, chocolates to chips and nuts. I'm glad you guys made it. Now that we're all here, I think we should get down to business. My attention was still on my childhood friend, who only briefly made eye contact with me. However, when his gaze wandered down to Jiu, who had made himself comfortable on my lap, his expression darkened, and he turned himself away from me. Why is that? What's gotten into him? Our argument from last night was still floating in my head. Why are you with- why aren't you with mom like I asked you to? Why? I'm sorry, I just- I- I'd rather be home right now, too. But what is the meaning of all this? Is it- I just wish you wouldn't have been dragged into this. The Yomi no Kuni is not just a scary place full of spirits that might not have your best intentions. You can die in here, Cade. Go inside. You must be tired. Tomorrow we'll have enough time to talk about everything. You're such a fucking liar. I can see it in your face. Izumi? Ah. Oh. oh. That means gentle tug of my arm had snapped me back to reality. Huh? Yeah. Yeah? Sorry. Are you alright? Did you get enough sleep last night? The whole situation must have really tired you out. Ah, uh, no, I'm fine. I turned my focus away from Haru, who had sat down slightly apart from the group, and faced Amano. Since you're still new to the Yomi no Kuni and have to get used to the environment, we should start easy. Earlier, I showed you some information on the souls we are currently dealing with, so if you have any more specific questions, please feel free to ask Hiro later. Sasaki shrugged and nodded, and then continued to shovel his snacks into his mouth. Okay, have snacks, how fun. So, Izumi, what kind of questions are buzzing in your head? Um, how long have all of you been in the Yumi no Kuni? Haruka and I were the first to be pulled into the Yomi no Kuni. That was nearly a year ago, right? Oh my god, it's been a year. For confirmation, Amano turned to Haru, who only gave an absent-minded nod. His gaze directed out the window. Haru has... Haru has been in the Yomi no Kuni for this long? Why didn't he tell me anything? In retrospect, the answer to that question was quite clear, and yet it hurt that he had left me in the dark. We have been in and out of the Yomi no Kuni since February this year, right, Mimi? Yeah, I think Sasaki arrived here just right before us. Amira's first night in the Yomi no Kuni was a good two months after our arrival. I guess you could say I was a newbie before you came. I've only been around since April. Though this short time feels like an eternity already. 
Melancholic smiles formed in the faces of some, as, of some as warm tranquility swept across the room. The silence which seemed to last for a long time was eventually broken by Amano's clearing his throat. Do you have some more questions we might be able to give you answers to? How many spirits have you been able to save so far? But before anyone was able to answer my question, I heard a mocking laugh erupt from the dinner table. Your question should be, how many have we not saved? Hero. Man, that's on comp floor. Everyone is trying their best. If everyone did their best, we wouldn't be stuck with the same information from day one. Guys, please. Though we could have worded it better, Hero is right. To answer your question, Izumi, Haruka and I were able to save two spirits, and that's pretty much it. Okay, but we saved one person already. An expression of defeat marked his face, and I saw him looking at Haru, who pointedly looked away, crossed his arms in defiance. Well, do you have any other questions? I'm just saying, if I was here this long and I wasn't not sleeping well, oh my goodness. I'd have to like, but you guys have jobs and stuff. I would need to sleep during the day. I'd be dying. What exactly is Jiu? Everyone went quiet and the others exchanged puzzled looks. We don't know exactly either. You could have asked me that the whole time, you know? I was trying to ask you. Jiu's ears straightened and he sat up on my lap to make eye contact with me. In the process, his paws dug into my, dug into my thighs. You can think of me as some kind of overseer. I make sure that everything proceeds as it should. So, you are part of the Yomino Kuni? Woman, have you ever seen a talking cat? No? His audible sigh echoed throughout the apartment. That was a rhetorical question. Yes, I am part of the Yomino Kuni. I've taken the form of a cat so that I can blend in more easily amongst your kind. Unfortunately, I am not qualified to give you information about this world you find yourselves in. You could have just- you could have asked me my ass. An overseer is a passive participant, someone who is not empowered to act. And who gave you this qualification? From the sound of it, there must be someone who is superior to you. Hmm. As I said, I'm not qualified to answer these kinds of questions. You two, you would be better off getting the information you desire by helping the spirits. It's no use, Izumi. We already accepted that he is nothing more than a cute-looking mascot. <laughs> Who are you calling a mascot, human? <laughs> you. Um, in any case, do you have any more questions we might be able to give you answers to? Okay, I mean, I'm- I- we- that's all. <laughs> the Yumina Kuni- we don't know- you guys don't have any more information about that. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask me or one of the others. Amano rose with a sigh from his seat and turned to the window, where Haru was standing. Haruka? He didn't react as he was called out several times. Only when Amano had taken a step towards him did he seem to wake up from his daze. Hmm? What's wrong, Amano? Wouldn't- what I wouldn't give to know what's going on inside his mind. I would like to talk to you for a moment, in my office, in private. Oh, with a gentle smile, Amano placed a hand on his shoulder and nodded in the direction of the hallway. Maybe, maybe there's a prophecy saying something about someone dear and near to you will join and there will be disaster. And now that I've joined, disaster is upon us. With the two gone, an uncomfortable silence spread through the room, interrupted only sporadically by the rustling of a chip bag on Sasaki's part. I hope you can let off some steam talking with Ray. Haruka tends to be quieter, but something seems to be really bothering him today. Haruka tends to be quiet? Anyhow, we cannot change it right now, and the last thing happening is Shano, in, is Sano sharing how he feels. Hmm. We're silent. Emmy, I'm going to make you some hot cocoa. Your specialty? With the heart with the marshmallows? Her face lit up as her friend threw her an affirmative nod. With this newfound energy, Inoue leapt into the air and skipped out of the living area to the open kitchen, Fukumoto bright behind her, less skippy. Well, now Ryoji, the only one who was sitting with me on the couch, slowly stood up as well. It's still a bit until the Yomino Kuni starts and I have to stop by the flower shop to check on my mother. 
and I seriously need a cigarette right now. Okay. With a firm pat on my shoulder, he marched past me and towards the apartment door. Now I'm pretty much alone. Although I could hear Fukumoto and Emmy working around in the kitchen behind me, I didn't feel like bothering them. Hot cocoa, hot cocoa. Yummy, yummy, hot cocoa. Ahem. Aren't you forgetting someone? Ah, sorry. I didn't mean to. Wait, can this damn cat, or whatever Gio is, read my mind? And what am I supposed to do now? Hmm. I take a deep breath before deciding to approach Sasaki, hoping he's in a decent mood today. Maybe he was just stressed out last night. Hey, Sasaki. Sup? I had mixed feelings about the situation. On one hand, his response didn't seem hostile. On the other, he didn't bother looking at me as he kept his nose buried deep in the papers he was perusing. I was hoping I could ask you a few questions about the spirits. I was told you were the most in the know with the info. He patted the seat next to him, still not looking up, but I could see him trying to hide a smile as it tugged on the corner of his mouth. Guess he likes recognition. Not wanting to waste my chance while his good in his good graces, I sat next to him, scooting a bit more closely to more easily see what he was looking at. <laughs> I noticed the tips of his ears go a bit red as our arms slightly touch, and he looked to me with his eyes slightly wide. Uh, you okay? Just as quickly, he looked away, refocusing on the papers in front of him. Yet, he made no effort to move away. Y yeah. Anyways, what did you want to know? Tell me about the old man's spirit. Suzaki smirked and I could swear I saw his eyes shimmer with interest. He's who I'm currently working on myself. He's who I'm currently working on myself. He's an old man whose spirit has been trapped here for quite some time, way before any of us were here. He's been enough tough, tough nut to crack, but I love a challenge. <laughs> He pulled out his notebook, which seemed to be filled to the brim with his personal notes. He even had sticky notes littering the pages to store more information. He flipped to his notes on the spirit and pointed them out to me. Here, Genji Fujimoto, age 75. He basically tried to avoid us for the most part. Unlike most spirits here who are either extremely divisive or manipulative or whatever else. He specifically seems to not want anything to do with us. He tends to stick around an abandoned old house and only rarely really speaks to us to tell us to leave. I don't understand him, though. His actions make no sense. I thought for a moment as my heart filled with sympathy for the old man. Maybe he's just really lonely. Beats me. Anything else? Uh, the young child. I'm between these two, the old man and the young child, to like tackle their spirits first. 15 year old boy seems like a lot. So I'll ask about the young child and that's it. Huh? Oh, huh. All right, let me see. He shuffled through his papers for a moment as if he were buried in a sea of notes. I wonder how he manages to keep the information so organized when he has so many notes. And here we go. Yamato Hamazaki, nine years old. This is Fukumoto's case, actually, even at her day job. So we have a bit more information than usual. Um, yes, we knew that. Part of a child trafficking situation. There's a lot of trauma surrounding his death. We suspect at minimum he has an acute case of PTSD or worse. Not sure what else I can tell you about him, though this is all the info Fukumoto has given me so far. Perhaps she could tell you more if you decide you want to help this spirit. I see. Poor kid. I watched as he took a sip of his drink, once again absorbed in his notes. Anything else? Ah, oh, I'm curious about the 15-year-old boy's spirit. Oh, that one. He's very juvenile, as you might expect. It's hard to get a direct answer out of him at times, since he just gets emotional and defensive. Saki rolled his eyes and sighed heavily as he spoke about the boy's spirit. If you choose him, be careful. He likes to throw shit and call people names like a toddler. His brash and impulsive behavior reminds me of a certain someone. It's fitting that he's working this case. Sasaki sucked his teeth, making a noise before shuffling through his papers some more. Anything else? I think that's about it. Alright. He seemed to think for a moment before turning to face me, confidently looking me in the eyes for the first time. You know, it not might not be so bad having you here. You already show more effort than half of these guys do. Like who? 
Sasaki's eyes were cold and judgmental as he had a faraway look playing on his features for a long moment in silence. Nothing. Never mind. Did you need anything else? Actually, yes. I was wondering, do you have any advice on which spirit to choose? He thought for a moment, biting his lip as he racked his brain. I mean, I just choose whichever is most interesting to me. The more information I get out of them, the better. Last thing I want is to keep being dragged around this godforsaken place forever, after all. I don't think it matters what you choose, really, as long as you actually get shit done. You're more helpful than most of them. I see. I see. Thanks for your help, Sasaki. He raised a hand to wave an acknowledgement at me while still keeping his eyes on his docks. I feel like this decision is going to be a bit harder than I expected. As soon as I left the bathroom and stepped into the hallway, the door to the room across from me swung open. Outstorm Haru, who momentarily looked at me as though I were a ghost, but then turned away from me and hurried out of the apartment. I turned to Amano, who had stepped out behind him. What happened? Have I done something wrong? A gentle smile formed on his lips. No, it's just... Unmistakable laughter echoed down the hall to us. Oh, Mimi, you know exa exactly what I meant. Stop teasing me. And that's great timing. Izumi, you're on your way back to the living room, right? Yeah. Could you ask Inoue to come to my office? I have something to discuss with her. Sure, I'll let her know. I wonder what he wants from her. Could it be by chance related to Haru's behavior? Mm hmm. With a small thank you, he disappeared in the office again, closing the door behind him. I stepped into the kitchen area of the living room where I saw them leaning against the counter, each with a cup in their hands. Hi, sorry to bother you. I'm just getting a drink. In a way, when you are free, Amano would like to see you in his office. But we just finished making the drinks. Don't worry, Mimi. Thanks for letting me know about Ray, Kate. I'll go see him now. Wait, Emmy. At least take your cup with you, or the hot chocolate will be cold when you come back. All right. What would I do without you? My eyes followed anyway as she exited for the hallway before turning back to Fukumoto, who took a sip from her cup. It was a few moments of silence before she said something. Well, for how long are you going to stand there like a lost sheep? Uh, right. Sorry. I came a bit closer to the kitchen counter while she grabbed another cup from the shelf and filled it with tea. I'm not sure what type of drink you wanted, but I hope this will do. I prepared this kettle earlier while making Emmy's hot chocolate. Careful. She passed me the cup, which my hands carefully embraced, taking in the welcoming warmth. This is fine. A few more minutes passed as we exchanged sips of our beverages. The floral fragrance of the tea filled my nostrils. Is that a hint of rose? So, do you prefer tea over coffee? We're drinking tea right now, aren't we? Is that going to answer your question? Um, yeah. I wonder what's wrong. She seems annoyed. Sorry, I don't usually talk to people other than my seniors and Emmy. I have a hard time being sociable. Did she notice my reaction? It's okay. You mentioned before that you're a police investigator. Can you tell me a bit more about it? I'm curious. Fukumoto stared at me. She sighed and set her cup down. Are you really that curious? It's nothing interesting. I just want to know a little bit more about you, that's all. Silence again. Will I ever get an answer out of her? I'm the youngest in my squad. Did Fukumoto actually share something new about herself with me? What's that like, being the youngest? You think I can't handle it? I may be the youngest, but I can keep up with the men. That's great, I love that for you. For one second, to the next, Fukumoto's tone changed drastically. Did I say something wrong again? I worked hard to get where I am. That's all there is to it. I'm sorry if I made you upset. Fukumoto's stare pierced straight through me. Learning more about her has become increasingly difficult. I, mean, I investigate crimes. My knowledge will help us here in the y Yomino Kuni. I know it will. Now, if you'll excuse me. She turned her back to me. After cleaning her cup in the empty, in, empty cup in the sink, Fukumoto gave a curt nod and left the room, leaving me with my now only cold beverage and muddled thoughts. A few moments later, Emmy came back to the living room, humming. All alone? Where did Mimi go? Uh, I don't know. 
Oh, Mimi, what will I do with you? She probably just felt awkward and left. Inoue sat down next to me. The look on her face told me she had taken an interest in me and was about to ask questions. So, liking our little ragtag group so far? I'm not sure I'm off to a great start with everyone, to be honest. Oh, don't worry about that. They'll come around. I think they have a good heart. Please don't take it personally if they take some time to warm up to you. I think a lot of them are just wary to let anyone into their lives easily. That sure included me as well. Talking to Inoue felt like talking to a well-meaning, about I'll bet, noisy high school friend. It comforted me, comforted me in a way. She definitely knows how to make people feel at ease. I'm sure she's great at her job. Her simple presence by my side, with her upbeat personality and joyful smile, was enough to ease the tensions. After a moment of queen silence, she turned to me with a mischievous grin. Say, anyone in our, anyone in our gang caught your eye? She wants the hot goss. I nearly spat out my tea when she asked that question. Sorry, did I startle you? No, you're okay. I'm just taken aback by your question. Oh, it's okay. I'm just really curious to know if anyone has, you know, special attention from you. Can I really open up to her about that? We really just met yesterday. I'm not trying to back you into a corner or anything. I just want to root for you and make sure you can at least find some belonging with us. Did she just read my mind or something? Realizing I had just been staring at her like a deer in the headlights for several seconds, I finally blurted out. <laughs> ah, that's so funny. Uh, I mean, not really. No one in particular. All right then, keep your secrets. Anyway, I don't want to make you uncomfortable with all this. Just know that I'm rooting for you. I'm sorry if I was too forward. Forward, yes. But I just can't be mad when she's so candid. Gosh, she's so... she's cute. Oh no, you're okay. It felt like we were two teenagers gossiping together. Inoue's warmth gave me at least a little reassurance that I was appreciated in this group. I returned her smile in kind, and we continued talking about our different interests. She showed me pictures of her designated grok shoe racks. She had to have at least 50 pairs of these shoes. And she wears them all? I can't believe it. I barely wear anything other than my one pair of sandals. After talking to Inoue, even if it was an unrelated conversation, it somehow felt the weight like the weight on my shoulders was much lighter. There's no right or wrong decision at the moment. I can just go with my gut feeling, if I can somehow settle on what that is. As we were reaching a moment of quiet in our conversation once again, we heard someone walk up to us. Hey ladies, sorry to interrupt. Mind if I steal her from you, Emmy? He gave us both a gentle smile, looking between us for any objections. Emmy simply laughed a bit and shook her head. Nope, no worries. I'll see you in a bit, Cade. Nice talking to you. I stood and smoothed out my clothes before following Amano into the separate, adjacent office room. He opened the door for me and then followed in after me, gently shutting the door behind us. Sorry, I just want to give us some privacy. I wanted to check on you. See how you are holding up. Huh? What do you mean? Well, I mean, I know everyone is a bit shaken at first when they're pulled into such an outlandish situation like this. I don't mean anything by it. I just want to make sure everything is all good. Yeah, I think I'm doing all right. He seemed to look me over as if he was trying to find anything, any sort of doubt or hesitation in my eyes. Yet, he found none. I gave him a reassuring smile, which he eventually returned once he seemed satisfied with my answer. Good. What about the others? You've had some time to socialize. Is anyone giving you trouble? Does he expect them to? Some of them are a bit quirky, sure, but they don't seem mean. No. Should I be worried? No, not at all. I'm just relieved. He laughed a bit before ruffling my hair with his large hand, which I squirmed away from to smooth my hair out again with a small groan. He seemed to notice what he had done and quickly pulled his hand away with an apologetic smile. I'm sorry. Worse of habit. Siblings? A little brother. I took care of him growing up. You are the eldest sibling. It's a habit of mine I haven't really broken yet. And now I take care of our little ragtag team. I think of you guys like family sometimes, so... Yeah, old habits die hard. I find myself smiling at him, enjoying the satisfied glint in his eyes as he speaks of his brother and friends. I'm sure they're grateful to have you, Amano. 
He gave me a sheepish grin and scratched the back of his neck before his gaze on me turned a bit more serious. You know, you have me too. I mean it. If you need anything, anything at all. A case giving you issues, someone in the group giving you trouble, or even just someone to talk to. I'm here. What I'm saying is, don't be a stranger. Around here, most of, if not all of us, are willing to help. I know it's a bit hard to mesh with new people off the bat, but I'm here, sending my olive branch. My eyebrows knit together in confusion, and he chuckled at my expression as if he could read me like a book. Never heard that expression? Sorry. It's some old Roman and Greek mythology saying. Essentially, it means I'm giving you a peace offering. Well, in terms of my offering my friendship, I know it might feel uncomfortable to have to navigate a new environment. That's confusing, and always trying to kill us. It's important to know who you can trust. I felt my smile widen at his offer, feeling grateful to have another ally in this new, strange world as things seem to change day by day. Thank you so much, Amano. I'll keep that in mind. I thought he was just a rich kid golden boy, but maybe he's not so bad after all. He returned my smile as he leaned back against the desk, crossing his arms over his chest. Now, now that the mush is out of the way, have you decided which spirit you want to help? I take a deep breath as I think over all my options as well as what I've been learning today. Finally confident with my decision, I spoke up. I have. I choose. Old man. Spirit. Let's go. I just decided that. Amano smirked a bit, like he was enjoying a joke only he was privy to. He crossed his arms over his chest, a mischievous twinkle in his eye. You're sure? That's your final answer? I felt my stomach drop at his question, feeling like I might have made a mistake. Was this a trick question? No, not at all. Just interesting. I watched as he bites his, bit his lip to stifle his laughter. <laughs> I'm sure I'm in for a run. He raised a hand to his mouth to try and cover his smile, and I felt my cheeks warm from his teasing. He was interrupted by Sasaki bursting into the room, clutching his notebook, which was still full to bursting, which only seemed to amuse Amano more. Right, I've got a lead, I... Speak of the devil. Sasaki paused and looked between us, one of his eyebrows cocking up curiously. Am I interrupting something? Not that I care, but I... Uh-huh. Amano cleared his throat to make sure that Sasaki stopped his ranting for a moment before continuing with a smile. Anyways, Izumi, meet your new partner. She's my... What? I don't need a... Sasaki's words were cut short as Amano gave him a smile that didn't meet his eyes, which pierced him sharply as if he dared him to continue speaking. Sasaki simply scoffed and grabbed my wrist, dragging me out of the room. Come on, then. I can't waste any more time. I don't need anyone else dragging me down. Okay, mister. Amano simply chuckled and waved goodbye at me as I looked back at him with wide eyes. He mouthed something to me and couldn't quite catch. My guess, my best guess, was he was trying to say good luck. I'm sure. End. And that is the end of the demo. Woo! That was great. Glad I could play it. I really like this. I'm really looking forward to the full game and all like the investigative aspects of it. Um, the characters are quite fun, and like yeah, we get a lot of like intermingling and different um, interpersonal relationships. Um, anyways, I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to the full game. Um, if you like this video, please like it. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see me playing more visual novels. I will continue playing Otome Jam 2023 um, entries as well as uh, some other ones. Um, yeah, if you have any game recommendations after this, please let me know. We don't have any of this. If we don't get it, we make different decisions. Um, but yes, that's fine. But anyways, have a good rest of your day. I will see you later.